Guys, what up? What's going down? We are here tonight. Yeah, man, how y'all doing, man? Welcome back, man. Uh, the RNS show, uh, we're back at it, man, doing our thing, man. So, yo, uh, we're just excited to be back here, man. And uh, every Monday, you know what I'm saying, on CPT, yeah. man, around 9-ish, man, we're going to be in the building. Now between 10, but yeah, definitely in the house, man. We're gonna get this show started. A lot of good topics to talk about today, man. So, what we want y'all to do, man, is to tune in and chime in, man, and uh, uh, go to the uh, Facebook page if you can, like and share it, or go to the, the, the Facebook group, uh, uh, RNS Show 210, man, and like, like and share it, man. Just be part of what we do here, man, and tell people about what we're doing. And definitely want y'all to be interactive and be yes, part of the show, okay. Yeah. To the left of me, man. Every week we do this, man. It's my boy in the house. Matt Dean, the catalyst. He's in the building. What is going down? All right. Let's get it. To the far right, man. I got up in the house. I got my man JP. Peasy's in the building, man. Definitely in the house, man. Peasy F, baby. Yeah. Gotta keep us honest around here. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Right here next to me, man, uh, in the pink Mickey Mouse shirt, doing a thing, <laughs> making it happen. It's the one only Hurricane Roxy. What's good, bro? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, so uh, we got a lot of good things going on today, man. We want you to be a part of, man, a lot of current events that we're going to talk about. And also uh, 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 a lot of... Uh, uh, Topics we want y'all to chime in. So, so please feel free to go online and comment and give Everybody's us some feedback when we're doing that. So definitely. Uh, we have a Facebook question of the day we do every show on here. Uh, Everybody's going off of it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's just disrespectful up in here. You know what I'm saying? Just It's all good. But... We got, a, we got a Facebook question of the day that yeah. we're going to talk about. Uh, it's a it's a topic that's very close to us, close and personal. Uh, if you were able close to listen to personal. any of the old shows, we yeah. brought it up on various occasions. You know what I'm saying? Y'all is man weed. That's what we're talking about. Man weed. weed Doug. We're talking it's about man back, weed. bro. Specifically. Specifically for men, uh, you know, we all know that young ladies and women get their hair weave, but these are weaves that you see online that guys are doing. I mean, it's dudes rocking the George Jefferson, and you turn around and they got they got a Michael Jackson afro. You know what I'm saying? Just really. So the question is basically, when you kind of come up to it, is uh, I guess is that okay for men to, to to spend the type of money that they're doing to do man weaves, and when is uh, when is it uh, a point where enough's enough, basically? Uh, Rock's got some facts about that to talk about a little bit to help you out with that. You know what I'm saying? So, Okay. So, this booming industry was, when we first started talking, if y'all can remember, if y'all followed the show and y'all can remember talk, us talking about this starting three years ago on the show, it wasn't as popular as it is now. Now, Insider posted that the man weave, which is um, similar to a woman getting their hair done, getting a weave done, putting it in, sewing it in, going and get it washed, whatever, is now a man thing. It is an $82 billion industry. And for each installment, between three hundred and fifteen hundred dollars, which lasts up to three to four weeks. Now, I don't get weave, but ladies, how long do your weaves last? Three to four weeks, if not maybe longer. Well, these man weaves are the same. They last I don't know if four they said the same the same time. They last now four you months. may pay less than what they're paying for men, but men. I'm asking the question of what is your price on getting your waves back? And not only that, but there are weaves that are dreaded. Niggas getting dreads, dreads as weave. You know what I'm saying? Like they've never lost their touch. Um, I've seen videos. I've shown Matt videos on the man weave industry. And ladies, 
these guys look good with their new hairdos. Like, I'm, I'll be like, mm, he's kind of questionable. But then I look at the new weave and I'm like, oh, he kind of cute. Like, 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 what's the deal? He was okay bald. He was yeah. okay. But the George Jefferson. Yeah. He, was he, was about about he was He was questionable yeah. bald. I mean, he was about to six. But, oh, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but he got the weave in. And then he looked eight. 30 years younger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, what is your partake on that? Yeah. Women, would you uh, would you encourage your man who is thinning in the front or cul de sac as, as <laughs> they speak, right? Ginobili. Would, yeah. you, would you encourage your sack. husband or a significant other to get the, the man weave? And anyone that's wondering, she's pointing at me. Uh, I hold, on, hold on, uh, yeah. Rock, no. <laughs> tell her, you also have to mention that you witnessed the story of a oh boy who was uh, actually struggling with the hairline deal. So, to where I read it an was, article. It was really like, go. Mm -hmm. I read an article, which I will post. The article it was it's an old article it's 2019 however it's still very common relevant. today yeah, it's still relevant so um the woman the his wife actually encouraged him she had seen a video seen a post and of this guy doing the man weave encouraged her husband to go get it done and it brought a different kind of spirit out of him he got it done mm. And he was more... He was cooking breakfast in the morning. Yeah, like... You know what I mean? Yeah. Manning it down in Massages, the bed. You know what I'm saying? Waking up for work on his own. He was like... You know what I'm saying? He showed a different vibe about himself. Nails. Now, if your husband is feeling incompetent or unconfident... What is the word? Yeah. Uncom uh, uh, unconfident. Unconfident. Not confident. Uh, He's oh, not really unconfident. confident. Yeah, yeah, He's unconfident yeah, yeah. about unconfident himself. Is a thing. Incompetent. No, it's yeah, 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 not yeah, yeah. Incompetent. Un <laughs> incompetent. <laughs> yeah. He's not feeling in confident about himself. <laughs> yeah. Not very I'm comfortable. Uncompetent yeah. about the He's uncomfortable with his appearance. Yeah. yeah. His look. Would you consider your man going to get a man leave for him to bring his umph back? You know what I mean? Can, his uh, uh, vibe, his I, mojo. I, I, think, I, think, I think you would have to keep it between y'all yeah. in a way. Like go to a, a foreign land. No foreign land. Yes. No. Yeah. Have, no. have never known you as it speaks different languages. Being <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, of yeah. being bald, my nigga. Go to a whole different city and relive <laughs> well, this life. Reinvent yourself. So, you know... I don't know. Go be no. free. So, you know what's funny you say that, Matt. So, but you can't do that where people know you. You're not wrong. So, uh -huh. I had this friend who was getting married. And I knew both of them. But, uh -huh. obviously, being bald myself, I could tell he was going bald. Okay. You know? And no one had mentioned it, but I brought it up to... At the time, Oh, you fiance. felt like you needed to address it yeah, well, to his fiance. Yes, because she knew it. PZ, that's hate. Well, no, we're all friends. So. Uh, oh, so that makes uh, it okay. This boy had I don't know if you're aware, go, but go, go. Asked, your fiance like, well, is. Uh, go. Um, uh, I asked, well, because it was a picture. I was like, hey, I asked, uh, is he going bald? Oh. Uh, <laughs> that that ain't like, hating to the fullest. No, no, I'm bald. What does that matter? It, I, I guess. You have I mean, the bald shit, Yeah. You have the bald. I went bald before The bald him. joking pass. Yeah, I'm saying. So, and she's like, yeah, he is. I'm curious. I just want to know when. His dad was bald. He's When did it start? Well, here's the thing, though. So. Um, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, it's not a big deal because everyone at this point, it seems more people are going bald than have hair. But she says, <laughs> I hope he doesn't lose it before we take our wedding pictures. And I told her, make sure he never hears you say that because that's terrible because it's going to make him feel uncomfortable. Yes. I, I told her, don't ever say that to him. She's like, I know it's wrong, but I don't want him bald in the pictures. I was like, oh, man, this is that's going to be rough. So, anyways, they ended up getting married, and uh, he hadn't gone bald yet, but then they moved. And now, I have never brought it up, but he wears a toupee. And to me, because I've known him, it's super obvious, but because they moved to a new city, it's, it, it doesn't they, change they don't any. know. So, Dude, I've never mentioned no. it. I don't want to put him on blast. I'm just that like... got the Jason Witten. Yeah. And it's... Like, yeah. I'm like, so, okay. But that shows you, though, sometimes men fairly see it as I need this to be able to see be seen as good looking because a person's own fiance soon to be wife was like I don't want him bald and they had been together for years already she's seen the hair deteriorating yep. before her own eyes yep and she couldn't accept it I don't as she seen I, the hair gather in the drain 
and she would. And the pillow, on the pillow, on the pillow, on the pillow, man. <laughs> Look, not the drain, man. Trust me on that. Look, the wind as uh, it blew, orange hair, hair follicles. In the okay, wait, 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 wait. No, it's no, no. Annoying. Okay. All right, go. So, my my dad is bald. My dad started losing his hair early, late thirties, early forties. My dad had long, curly, beautiful hair, mm. and he started thinning. And then my daddy eventually was like, "Fuck it." Yeah, went that shaved, that that shaved it. Mm-hmm. But then my dad not only shaved it, he went razor yep. shaved Same. to the I, point to I where that, to the point on. to where he was like, "Mija, come in here and help me shave my head." Oh. <laughs> and it was cool. It was like it was not a it was not a, a an issue. Yeah, it wasn't a question. It wasn't a judgmental thing of like, "Well, why are you doing this?" or you know anything like that. It was not on that. It was like, "Okay, daddy." I'm gonna help you, and my mom was completely cool about it. Yeah. So, not to put my husband on blast, but I've seen my husband with hair and go without. What? And I'm cool with it. It, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Unlike your friends and yeah. his wife, where it was oh, yeah. an issue. Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually encouraged my husband. Was, like, just yeah. shave it off. I'm gonna yeah. have to fade it. Wasn't, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't fade a. It, out for a second. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, a big yeah. deal to me. Like it wasn't. But I, I, I like. I, gonna I like warmed, I warmed her up for it though. I ain't just. And he see, warmed up to nothing. When I see with me, it was like a. Uh, yeah, when I first saw myself going bald, I was like 23. I don't know if you remember man, when I started going bald, <laughs> but I was super young. But I noticed it, so I said, "Well, I'm gonna have to get used to it." And even before I started going bald, I was like, "If it gets to that point." Because I've seen too many men trying to hang on to something that's not there. And it's very uncomfortable. To so what I did is I shaved all of it off one time. Even though I had hair still. Mm-hmm, just to say, okay, this is what I'm going to look like. I need to understand that. Accept and it. Accept it. I grew my hair back out. And then it slowly started just getting shorter and shorter until yeah. I was but, you, but y'all, but, but y'all have to understand that there are women out here that actually like a bald head. Mm-hmm. You know? Um... Like I said, I grew up with it. Yeah. I guess you know? everybody, everybody's just skipping over the ball guy. But no. Because uh, <laughs> you ain't speaking. Uh, the, no, the no hat. I was we trying don't, to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We the don't no hat guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm the confident, <laughs> the confident ball guy that night. Okay? <laughs> but Adrian looks good. Goddamn. Bald. Right. He looks yeah, good bald. Goddamn yeah, right. You know, what I'm saying? You, you know he's got this whole. But y'all, 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 y'all haven't seen him. Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all haven't. Because uh, it's been so long since y'all seen him. He was small. It has been years, hey. I remember you were here. Yeah, from. It, it was Kobe. It was back here then, too. Yeah, you had a Kobe. In home, right? I, I thought I was Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, I remember that. Kobe. Here's the deal, man. I just, I don't know. And call me old school, old fashioned. I just don't see what guys' hair means that much to guys. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I can't. I just don't. You know I mean, we live in a society that where shiny things, as I say it, are pretty yeah. to everybody. Yeah, you know, just what's I the just best looking thing? Though. And. As women have done for a long time, men have incorporated that now with where women, obviously it's a lot cheaper and it's a lot quicker to fake eyebrows, to fake nails, to everything that you can do that's fake, the weave, so things like that. It's, it's cheaper, it's, it's quicker, it's, it's faster. But at one yeah. time, you got to remember, and this is when we were younger, it was looked at a little weird. Like, oh man, she's got a weave on? Oh man, what kind of weave is that? Is that? Mm-hmm. And then eventually people just say, you know what, it's a thing now. And what I told y'all before, whenever we first started talking about this, was the normalization of it. We are normalizing it now for men to be able to get the man weave. Or even get uh, uh, surgery implants. What do you call Mm -hmm. it? Um, Restoration, whatever they call it. Yeah, but how does that even really work? Because (laughs) because to be honest, to be honest, who actually really, what have you, what, what, have you seen booming in that industry? Nothing. I don't see stories of people getting their hair implanted. Not on not as not much as you level. do. Not on our level. Well, it's gonna be too expensive. That's what I mean. So people who have more money or who are in, in front of the camera, like YouTubers, I see it a lot more often. But it's because their their visualization is a part of their job. So I see them doing it a lot more than people like us where we have the normal nine to five job and our appearance isn't as important to the job. But I do see it with the YouTubers mm-hmm. a lot. I, and I, I'm mm-hmm. sure there's about a hundred man weaves going on on the news in the 
Yeah. So, I mean, but I've seen beard weave too. So that's okay. yeah. No, that's another thing we've been um, wanting to bring I can't up. rock with you again. So, beard weave, man. Um, beard I, weave. Though. Remember I told you, I told you about the beard weave. I said what? they're doing <laughs> the hair weave for men and now the next thing is the beard weave. Can you really respect I've the shown you, beard weave? I've <laughs> shown you videos, baby, of the beard weave. I've shown you they I have they the cut beer it up. Or yes. The beard of the beard weave. Beard weave. The beard There's weave. There's no way. Okay. Well, how? So, how um, you show up with a whole face full of hair? I don't know. Well, how do they show up with that hair? No, I will let a nigga make it on that, bro. I will swear to God, nigga, we have, that'll be our little secret, bro. So, okay. But no, you're not about to show up with a, a, a James Harden, nigga. Shut up. So, question of the day, Stop, ladies bro. and gentlemen. Cut it out, I see it though. Would out. you consider your significant other? I'm not gonna say significant other women. Would you consider your man, your husband, your boyfriend, or whatever, to purchase a man weave for their um significant for their hair? Yeah, for their hair. Oh, significant other. It has to be. My, my girl better not purchase me a man weave, nigga. This better be between okay. me for Christmas. And, my. <laughs> and would it be considered? Merry something? Christmas, babe. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> and would it be considered something that you are willing to pay for that's the every thing. three months? I think that's what it comes down to. Surprise more so. the nigga with that Well, okay. let's say if it was cheaper, if it didn't cost, what does it cost? Three to fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. How embarrassing! But every if it costs, three to four months. Right. So if it only costs, let's just say, for example, you get the exact same thing for twenty bucks. Would it like a haircut, be, right? Almost in that sense. Would it be something that would be more acceptable just because people of a lower income could actually get it? Um, no. no, because, no. nigga, you could be bald whether you got money or not. No, but that's something you don't have a choice over. This would be. Oh, you're talking about the hair follicle. That one, or even the weed. Rise, rise, what is it? Gra- uh, what is it? A graphing, a a graphing, oh yeah, whatever the, the, the business, yeah. yeah. Bosley. But see, Bosley. something <laughs> rocks. On the real, let's hit this real quick. Peasy. What if somebody said happy birthday, my nigga, and they bought you a man? <laughs> like, That's what it is. I mean, they're trying to tell you something. You have to hit something. next 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 Thanksgiving with the man. We even make it to like <laughs> what if wave the yeah, money like a gift card. Like, oh uh, yeah, I put it to use. Okay. Like, yeah. So. So oh, then. Oh my. God, that Again, be women, women, women with yeah. husbands that are losing their hair, or yeah. would you consider, or gay men, yeah. whichever one, <laughs> would you consider purchasing them a man weave, or now that's new coming out mm-hmm. is the beard, the beard weave. weave, would you consider it? There's a poll Matt posted. Check out the poll, yes yeah. or no, let us know, they we'll go over a, the poll next week. got a dope track too. But um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next um, segment. And what is that? Uh, well, it's another question that we kind of posed. And I'm gonna let Mac get into the details a little bit about it because uh, it, it's surrounded by a situation with Baker mm-hmm. Mayfield. So mm-hmm. get into the details of that, and then we'll pose the question. Well, we'll talk about that. I kind of like branched this question off of like you know you have things, uh, current events that you see and uh, people you look up to or uh, celebrities, if you will, that go through things that we might normal, normal possibly go yeah, through yeah. ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I try to take things that we see on uh, on mainstream media and then I apply it to regular well, people. Every day. We're regular. Yeah, yeah. But, um, we're basic. You know, uh, the Browns <laughs> suffered a tough loss. Yes, the, the Browns? Who are the Browns? Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns football team. Yes, football team. And uh, Baker Mayfield is the quarterback for that football team. Uh, I personally like Baker Mayfield. I don't have nothing against Baker Mayfield. Uh, he came from Oklahoma. Uh, he's a winner. However, he's been struggling ever since he's gotten to Cleveland. Um, his wife... Uh, posted, uh, I, my thing is I'm not sure what platform she posted on. Twitter, I believe. Uh, but, okay, we could say Twitter, and she was kind of backing him up on the loss because it seems like the fans were giving him a lot of scrutiny, a lot of uh, slack on uh, the loss, kind of blaming him for it because yeah. they want a winning quarterback. Uh, that's going to take them to the next level. So, she decided to get his back, and 
she posted some things as in him, you know, uh, really being emotional about the team, putting his life on the line for the team, uh, really giving most of his time to the team. So when it came down to her comments, I saw that a lot of her fans were supporting her. They were supporting Baker Mayfield and trying to get behind him when at first they were seeming to be disappointed and they wanted to give her a hard time, give him a hard time. And so I kind of spun it off into how could you relate it to yourself is if you were the person or, you know, somebody that you have a job to do and people are giving you a hard time, you kind of bring it home to you, to your wife, uh, and maybe vice versa, your wife is working somewhere and they seem to be keeping her there all day and they're giving her a hard time. Like her supervisor's always on her. Every time I call you, you know, you call me for lunch, you're not in a good mood. Mm -hmm. Things like that. When do you when do, when do you feel like it's the time to kind of step in and maybe possibly say something? Because right. I felt that being a man and kind of being in a position of uh, maybe the spotlight, maybe you wouldn't want your wife to say anything. Um, can I say something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what I uh, proposed to Matt was, you know, the question of when is it okay for uh when where where is the line of women stepping in for their man or cutting their the man's feet from under them? Um, y'all know what that means, right? I'm gonna have to explain that. Part, no, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so is it? <laughs> I don't. <Peasy. laughs> no, I can just say yes. It yes, doesn't be know. that way, but. <laughs> When is it um, okay for a woman to step in their man's benefit and not be something that's cutting the man's feet, where they can't stand mm -hmm. up for themselves? Like, where where does the thin where does the line come? Um, what Matt's talking about, I completely understand um, where he's going, and that's what my question was. When is it okay for a woman to step in? When is it okay for women not mm -hmm. to? And should the man speak up and say like, chill out or thank you, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is, where is the line between Where's them? that line? So, Ace, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, maybe, maybe vice versa or even we apply it to children. If, yeah, if you're yeah, in that yeah. situation, however you can apply it to your life because sometimes you might want your kid to play, get some PT. Right. And like me and you discussed earlier, maybe the coach, uh, has had a conversation with your child and you don't, you're not aware of it, but it didn't come to your attention where you feel like you need to step in and say, say coach, what's up with my son or what's up with my daughter? Uh -huh. And when does that time come or is it okay? Or do they just need to learn on their own? Yeah, Which means that, it's like a thin, yeah, there's a the, thin line there. Yeah, that well, what be, is that? I don't know. Yeah. The, the, the child parent thing is a whole different deal. I mean, I, we could get into that topic here a little bit later. <clears throat> when you're talking about spouse, or that, I mean, that's just, that depends on a lot of things. I just, uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I can't see, like, for instance, it's kind of like you said earlier. We, we talked about this earlier. but mm. you know, It's like you said earlier, like, for instance, it, are you going back and telling the wife and, and complaining to her uh, and, and and, and, and kind of almost inviting her to go up there, you know what I'm saying? Because you complain to because us so much. Because it's becoming a burden in y'all's yeah. life. Yeah. Or, it, I mean, you know, or like, because, you know, plain and simple, a lot of times you can do more harm than good in that situation, I think. Women or men? I mean, well. Or both or, parties. Or, or, or spouse. I mean, you can do it for men, too. I mean, if you're at work and, uh, let's say, let's put on the woman. The woman's at work, they're giving a hard time or whatever the case may be, or in a lot of times in the situation, it may be a dude up there that's hitting on you or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Let's put it on something like that. So the husband now feels that he needs to go on your job and have a conversation with this dude. Mm -hmm. May do more harm than good. Or in a situation on, like that was you good. going up there and you say something like, hey, you know what, I'm complaining about work. Uh, I got passed over for a raise or whatever the case may be. So the wife decides, well, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to talk to the boss about it or whatever the case may be. You may do more harm than good. So it's just... It's, it's a crazy subject. I, I don't think it's like a, a thin line. I just think that you have to look at the circumstance and make the best call. Well, I'll 
Based off of what you just described, when it comes to, I feel like I need to get a raise, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a woman's position to come if it's a man or vice versa. If Mm -hmm. I'm complaining that I feel like I need to get a raise has nothing to do with um, the issues that I'm having at work. It has everything to do with my performance. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't expect my husband to go in and be like, you need to give my wife a raise because mm-hmm. she's busting her ass. He really doesn't know what I do or what I don't do unless I speak mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to something like, look, um, this guy is harassing me. I've already reported it. I've already done this. I've already done that. Work isn't doing anything about it and I feel very uncomfortable. Then maybe... That would be something for my husband to go and be like, hey, look, what is the deal with you messing with my wife? Mm-hmm. Now, if it comes back to pushback, and obviously I wouldn't put my husband in that position because I need to make sure that my end legally is good. Where I correctly present the issue to work and if they're not handling the situation, then you know what, fine. I'm going to go another way. But this also goes back to the whole scenario with um, what you're talking about with mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield. Now, um, I, I don't know sports like that. I understand. I know who Baker Mayfield is. He's the, the quarterback that, you know, lives in the stadium. He's the quarterback that lives in the stadium, has a coffee pot, uses all the restrooms. You know, I've seen it. I've, I've, I think it's funny. You know, I haven't watched his game. I don't know. But what I asked Matt earlier was, like, pull up the stats. Show me his stats. You know, mm-hmm. uh, were they low in the last yeah, 10 like years? The Cleveland Browns have been struggling mm-hmm. a lot before they got back. Where? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, for his wife to come in and say, like, hey, y'all don't understand what y'all have because you could have 10 years ago, guys. And they're not performing, but then you have now have Baker Baker mm, Mayfield, and he's he's got something going for y'all. Yeah. Appreciate it. I get it. I get it completely. Um, but I don't know sports like that. So correct me if I'm wrong on that aspect of their come yeah, up. She ain't got no place to say anything like that. Mm-hmm. I love football team. Plain and simple. Like if I'm on a team with him and his wife come in here talking about well, he's. I'm, I just lost respect. For him. But I understand. <laughs> but I but I do understand that nigga, you are in the NFL. You are not in college anymore. You are you have a lot of expectations more than what you had before, high school, college, because now you're in the pros. You were hand picked, right? You were hand picked. Yeah. And you have more expectation of you. So don't come on the NFL and now crybaby, be crybaby mm-hmm. on what you're not getting, recognition or whatever the mm-hmm. hell it is. Mm-hmm. Because now you're in the NFL, mm-hmm. you're in the big leagues, you're, you're a professional. We, you're you, you shouldn't be babied at this point. Mm-hmm. You know. So I understand that. Now, like I said, when it comes to the wife having the man, that's where the thin line is. Where do you? Cut your ties. Where do you not say anything, or when do you say something? Um, that's 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 yeah. where the question yeah. is. Or do you say anything at all? Or do you not say anything at all? Mm-hmm. Just let it go. You know, let it be. Like, yeah. is it gonna become pillow talk? Where you just, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, babe, but that you're feeling some, that so, way. Sometimes you just needed to just be that. Sometimes you just want to vent. And, and I'm not speaking on his behalf. I'm just saying, like, sometimes you don't want your the way you feel to come out. You know what I mean? Like, I, I I feel this way, but I don't want nobody to feel this way. I want them to know that it's not bothering me at all. I'm ready to win. You know what I mean? So if you interview me, if you, I'll probably be like, you know what? It was, a, it was a tough loss. I'm ready to win. Ha, smiling, right? But your wife knows you, you're you sick. You know what I'm saying? And you're tired. You read the, you heard the... You heard the comments, and you read it, and it bothered you, you know, and it bothers her, because things that bother you bother her, you know what I mean? So, but, it ends up rolling into that. And then, to, in the, to 
move forward. You know, mm-hmm. that's where I think the man needs to come in and say, like, look, I'm just letting you know how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. I am venting to you. I want you to know that I'm frustrated. I'm mm-hmm. kind of angry with what I'm hearing or seeing on Twitter or whatever social media is. And maybe at that point in time, the wife is be like, you know what? During football season, no more social media. No more. Come on. Nothing. None of yeah, none of the outlets. You just need to focus game. on this, on that. Mm-hmm. You know, on your game. Focus on your mentality because obviously these things are are getting mm-hmm. to you. You and me. Yeah, because maybe she need to get off that too. Because I'm it's tired of laying too. down at night, wives. Mm-hmm. Wives, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm tired of laying down at night and listening to you, hearing and talking about what you're, you know, what you're seeing and what you're hearing on Facebook or whatever, and it's causing a, a decline in our relationship mm-hmm. nine night time mode. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, maybe that's what maybe that's what she should have done versus go on national TV or national whatever you want to call it and vent mm-hmm. for her husband because maybe all he was doing was pillow talking and venting to her, which she should have kept. Women are stronger than men. Y'all know that. I'm strong men emotionally. We should be able to. Who said that? <laughs> we did. Like, you Women said that. Right there. Like, you come up with that. T- <laughs> you <okay? laughs> We should be able to handle a lot of the things that our men tell us, you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's just, I'm just being funny. Yeah, no, I'm but anyway, uh, I, I just think, like, honestly, if he's not Baker Mayfield, she's not venting to nobody. I just think that was a way for her to do something to kind of get some shine out. To be honest with you, I mean, like, I don't see if you, you know, uh, not knocking Via, but if you're a Via bus driver, your wife going down and saying, hey, my husband's been <laughs> talking to me at night. And Telling me to, that you're you need to driver. treat him better. You know, or going on Twitter, wherever she went to post that. She did that because she's Baker Mayfield's wife, and it was a plan for her to do that and kind of get a name out there, like mm-hmm. she said something. I mean, that's just truthful, what I think. I don't, I don't, you know, I think that, like I said, it wouldn't. It, it, and and that's what I'm saying. Like, what is the like where's the thin line between all that? You know. Um, yeah, yeah. So she may have went outside of her lane. Lane. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I believe she did. Yeah. yeah. So. But hey, sometimes you need that too. All right. So sometimes definitely, if, if that's a topic I want to get into a little bit further, y'all can go ahead and uh, chime in on that. We'd mm-hmm. like to hear from you, get some feedback on it. I mean, it's definitely something interesting. Uh, there is a thin line when it comes to that, and there's a lot of situations that can be brought up from there. But definitely in that Baker Mayfield situation, I mean, it, I, I, you know, it's kind of just a little, mm-hmm. a little uh, skeptical that you know she just kind of you know all of a sudden. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's been complaining since he's in college. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? We ain't had nothing at the soonest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically yeah. it. Yeah. Peace over that quad today, man. So uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get you involved, man. Let's let's let's. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about politics, man, and what's kind of going on, man. Like we said, we're going to try to keep people aware of what's happening in the world of politics, man. Let's talk a little bit about that. How depressing it can be. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the main topic, I guess, of U.S. politics for the most part is um, the January 6th insurrection investigation by Congress. Um, so recently, uh, Donald Trump and his lawyers uh, are suing the National Archives to, in the hopes of withholding any information related to Donald Trump's documents of that date, phone calls, text messages, emails, anything like that. Um, so that's the ongoing lawsuit because what they're hoping is that through executive privilege, but executive privilege that won't be defined by a sitting president, but by a former president, that they can withhold these documents or at a minimum, uh, have the National Archives identify what documents are going to be shared, give those to Trump's lawyers, let them review them, and then they determine on which ones can be shared and which ones cannot. So no matter which way you look at it, it's just to stop any type of sharing that could get Donald Trump in trouble. Um, what's more than likely going to happen is that uh, this will go to the Supreme Court. And honestly, I see Donald Trump winning. Uh, I, I just because this is a um, this will set precedent over um, former presidents 
inserting executive privilege, executive privilege on documents that were created at the time they were presidents. Mm -hmm. um, the closest thing we've seen to this is Nixon and Watergate. Yeah, uh, if Nixon would have had this. He he was he was he would have been president. He would have got impeached. <laughs> well, he resigned. Anyway. He resigned. <laughs> yes, yeah, he resigned because uh, he knew it was false. Yeah. Uh, once the tapes came out and the tapes that he recorded, yeah, you know they were on him that he was trying to record him to to show off once he was done being president as what a president should act like. And then instead, what happens is that he records himself giving direction to his uh, national security advisor to force the newspapers to stop investigating them, which is against the law. A president cannot do that. So they inserted, or he attempted to insert executive privilege on documents, but what ended up happening was that the once he resigned and the vice president became president, um, I can't remember who it was at the time, Gerald Ford, Gerald yeah. Ford became president, he acquitted him of all legal wrongdoing, so he didn't have to exert executive privilege yeah. anymore. So that fight never continued. Yeah. Well, now it is. Yeah. So now this will be the final definition of can a former president assert executive privilege on documents that were created when he was president? Do does do they have that power to where the sitting president can't tell them not to? Yeah. So that's what's going to come down to, and this will set up for many things moving forward for any president in the future as to what can be shown and what can't Jesus. be shown. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, just started. This is going to take months, if not years, uh, to get settled out. But like I said, I I, I see. I can't see Donald Trump losing this. Yeah, and, and, and what they're hoping for is if even if they they can't get the documents, you know, they can't if they if they can't get it to where people can't get access to the documents. All they're really hoping to do is stretching this out to the the, the midterm elections when the Congress will go back to being Republican mm -hmm. and they won't convict them anyway. They'll, they'll dissolve stall, the investigation. Yeah, they'll yeah, they'll it's, a stall tactic. Yeah. it's a stall tactic. So uh, that's why PZ is like, yeah, the fact Donald Trump's going to win anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, 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 it's it's a crazy world. Uh, and the reason I like to bring up politics and keep talking about them because without a national election, without, without people talking about politics, everybody seems to ignore things. Mm -hmm. And this is when things happen. You know, the vo our voting rights are being taken away. You know what yep. I'm saying? Abortion, abortion's gotten taken away. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And now Donald Trump, Trump's going to the to, uh, the courts, and he's suing to make him stall on these these forms right here, so he can get away with the insurrection, which we all mm -hmm. saw on TV and saw what, what happened with that. It's all uh, uh, bullshit, to say the less. So yeah. uh, just. Uh, uh, Wanted to peasy to kind of touch on that and uh, get into that a little bit and, and just y'all be aware, man. I mean, y'all pay attention. That's what man. it's all about. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, there's a lot of things going on that uh, uh, you guys need to make sure that you're part of. All right. Uh, and, and keeping that in mind, also in the news, uh, Haiti's been in the news lately. Uh, we, we got some Americans down there that are abducted in Haiti uh, and one Canadian, Canadian, 17 people. Yeah. 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 Uh, American missionaries. And it's crazy. Uh, uh, we all know the, the state Haiti's been in for years. It ain't for been, centuries. But it's definitely been crazy since the president got assassinated in July. And pretty mm -hmm. much the gangs run the streets, the big one called, and the, the people who actually uh, uh, took the people or, or, or kidnapped, kidnapped the people. Yeah. Uh, they're called 400 Moros, really 400 guys, pretty much is a big gang that runs Prince of Paul or right outside the area that went on ahead. And, and and it's nothing new right now. In Haiti, kidnapping, extortion, all that stuff is big business down there. That's, that's what they do. And they, they, they grab foreign nationals and ask for a ransom, usually around $20,000. So that's basically what's going on down there. That's in the news today. And along with that, the last time we were on the show, we were talking about how a lot of Haitians were at the Mexican border. People were wondering why mm -hmm. that was happening. Well, people were trying to get the hell out of Haiti. Yep. Haiti is uh, uh, it's a it's a free for all down there right now, man. They they're saying it's a land with no laws, man. So I'm pretty sure. That's what you were texting me. Lawlessness, yeah. right? Yeah, lawlessness. If lawlessness. You're, if you're if you're law abiding, probably the last place you want to be. <laughs> so and you, you come over here, and and uh, we want to chase you down on horses and stuff. You know that's probably still better the way better yeah. way they live. They probably like well we cool right you know. Yeah. We're gonna stay in this desert. You know what I'm saying? At least there's some law out here. 
So, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it's an unfortunate situation. Um, Haiti has been in a terrible position, and geographically as well, because they always deal with rather massive earthquakes. There was one not too long ago that just totally destroys their infrastructure. So when you don't have a government and the infrastructure goes down and you need aid to help people who are in dire need of it and it's an international emergency, um, you know, bad consequences can happen. It happens all the time in Africa. You know, mm-hmm. uh, there's, that's why it's completely outside of South Africa, completely ruled by separate territories and gangs. What kind of currency do they have in Haiti? It's French, so I don't know what the French currency is there. Yeah, I don't know. The mark? Is it the mark? It might be the mark. Yeah. Frank. What is that? The Frank. There you go. Yes, it's Frank. Frank. Oh, the Frank? It's not Mark, it's Frank. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, Steve, actually. Steve, Steve John. Yeah. yeah. But what? what is that? What is it? It's like money. It's like a dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They and they do it in coins, money. soft coins. Uh, U.S. is really the only one, us and uh, Britain are the only ones that use cash, paper money, but the okay. coins otherwise. So we go to Haiti mm-hmm. on a trip or a vacation because mm-hmm. of their beautiful landscape. Mm-hmm. It is beautiful. Right? Yeah. So then, what do we use over there? We have to. We have to convert it. Yeah, we convert it. We convert it. Yeah. But see, they don't have a government right now. Right. Right. We couldn't do that right now because they don't have a government. So once they get a government, and if they're able to set that up, then the government would regulate the conversion currency conversion. So then, how do? How is their money? There isn't right now. That's why it's so bad. There's no money right now. They don't have nothing right now. They like, have what they have. So it's a trade kind of thing. In it's a, a sense, barter kind yeah. Of thing because right really, their money, think of it as Venezuela. When Venezuela had their economic depression, which is technically still going on, mm-hmm. um, you know, $1,000 couldn't even buy you bread because of the economic pattern that hit, because it cost so much to bring something in food wise. Mm-hmm. A loaf of bread would cost you, in American, it wasn't much, but obviously, because American dollar is so much more than any other currency. For them, it would be like 10000 of their currency just for a loaf of bread. It became too expensive to buy anything. Which is to us what? To us, that would be like 100 bucks. 100 bucks for a loaf of bread? For a loaf of bread. That's why they started starving. That's why you saw the mass... Remember the immigration train or the immigration budget mm-hmm. they were talking about during Trump's mm-hmm. presidency? Mm-hmm. That's where it was coming from. Now, they tried to blame that on socialism. It had more to do with the dictator that was running the country. But that's what the kind of thing that happens when you have a government that's installed... And it leads to an economic depression. Haiti has no government. So their depression is all over. It's a geological depression. It's a ecological So they depression. have nothing coming in. They have nothing, have nothing coming, coming in. It's considered a war. It's like There's no order. What, yeah. is, what is Haiti have to offer another country for them to bring product? Resources. Like if we're doing, yeah. Farming. What are their resources? Farming. Farming. So uh, tobacco, um, wheat. They're big farmers. Wheat? That's, yeah. Not weed. Well, maybe. <laughs> shit, maybe. Who knows? They got far yeah, around. It, 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 so, Haiti, but see, Haiti totally. used to be a slave country. Mm-hmm. The French are the ones that in, uh, put them into slaves. Then in the late 1700s and early 1800s, you had the Haitian Revolution, right? But because the French had been there for several centuries already, they learned the French language. They learned the French ways. Like if you go to Haiti before the earthquakes hit and the infrastructure went down, a lot of it was French architecture. Because the French moved Occupied. there, yeah, and they started up the the tobacco fields, the cotton fields, just like if you were in Georgia in the United States before Georgia the Civil Baker. War. Mm-hmm. Same thing. So although they did get their freedom from the French, they still use a lot of French standards, including the money when they have it, but as well as the farming system that they were forced to go as because it's all they know. So that's what they would import and export. So the so Haiti uh, does have no allies. They don't have um, no. Um, they're not like government ties with the U.S. or or Africa or England. They don't have. They don't have no allies. For well, you them can't to have, have an, anything yeah, come in. Yeah, see the thing goes that or whatever. You can't have an ally without a government. Governments are what the terms allies. Okay. So they lost you their government. Don't talk to a nigga on the street. And shit. That's well, all it is. Who's they talking? don't have any. Okay, who's talking okay, for okay, y'all? Okay, okay. No one is. Yo, so we then, need. <laughs> how? Okay. Hmm? I guess my question is. Hmm? How does a country recover? Begin to have a yeah, system. Yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. how do they do? JP, mm-hmm. do you need to move out there and be the government? No. For them? So what happened there? You know what I mean. Like, how do you become someone that 
form structure for government. But that's what makes government. this. This is what makes this so different. It's because they're an island. There's no other bodies of nations around them. Like let's say for Iraq, for example. Let's say the U.S. never went in and their government went down. Well, because Iran, Pakistan, all those places mm-hmm. are next to it, they can go in there and either establish themselves as a new hierarchy or help them create a government. But it's because it's all land. I mean, you don't have, when you live on an island, you're by yourself, unless you're already um, government, governmentized by a foreign country, and let's say French, or France, for example, right? If they still were over Haitian. So there wouldn't be a president like they had. They would just follow the French prime minister and the king and the queen, like the way Canada does with England. Canada is technically ran by England. That's why they have the same judicial system there. So is Australia, so is New Zealand. That's why they aren't worried about something going down uh, where they're at, because if it does, well, England technically owns that land, so they would come in so and then, help them rebuild uh, it. What, mm-hmm. Well, not that I would want the U.S. to take over Haiti, but yeah. what if the U.S., like um, the Dominican Republic, right, or... Mm-hmm. Um, um, what is that? Puerto, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, uh-huh. Puerto Rico. Well, right? that's a territory of the United States, so they. But they're an island, though, right? Yes, but see. Okay. They go through our. The only thing that's different between well, Hawaii is an island. Well. But, but, Hawaii, that's state, but that's a state. That's a state. Mm-hmm. But, but Puerto they're Rico, islands. right? But that because we own the land, they don't have a president of Hawaii. They run off of our president. Exactly. That's, that's what I'm the saying. difference. So then, then, yeah, right. yeah, that's what, be, <laughs> that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like Puerto Rico, although it's not a state, it's a territory. Don't they have don't have a president. Is Hawaii there. attached any way to the United States? Just, by land. Not by land, no. No, right. neither is Haiti, right? Right, but again. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Could the United States adopt them as a country? They would need a government, or they'd have to go in military, militarily. And take over the country. Well, that's the only way they, they can they do it right now. The government is too corrupt. That's all. There is no government. That's the thing. It's been well, totally demolished. The yeah, they exactly. have the military there, and the military is technically and the gangs is yeah. what's running the country right now. It's, it's a militarized zone. The so, and this is how come yeah. everybody's fleeing their country, yeah. trying yeah. to come to the United States. Mm-hmm. There's no order. Yeah. There's no order. You're yeah. around somebody kicking your door and nothing be done. So then yeah. we can go in and be. The order. But see, that, right? we not necessarily. No, 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 no. Because, because it's not an occupied land they grab by, another, by a foreign nation, the UN, the United Nations would have to approve it. So in other words, every country that's under the United Nations would have to agree. So the United States why? would go in. Yeah. No, no, no. Let's but check it out, though. I mean, if you look what at I'm the saying is we're not, we, we don't have to be tied to the United States. Only because we're U, United States citizens, we would still have to... Who cares? Go through who, the laws. <laughs> who cares? Well, check it out, man. When you look just, at the videos, I'm just, I'm just look at the videos, man. They got people walking down the streets. I mean, you know, just regular dudes, and they got, they and the dude said, man, guns is power. They got like real machine guns. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, it's real. That's where they got them from. Yeah, and like, you walk yeah. the guns uh, I mean, it, you know, take anything. It, it, it's almost like you know, if you look at American and being American, and, and one thing is, you can't fathom that. Like mm-hmm. we have. We have our problems. We talk about violence, or whatever. But to be honest with you, most major cities, whatever, you know what the violence is, or yeah. kind of way you can stay away from it. But these cats was just like walking downtown, and they was having an all-out war right there. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. So what they're doing is, if you're American, I mean, dude, you're talking about going to Haiti. You got you got people that are the mission. They 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 took they uh, grabbed missionaries and nuns. The people who know it's a messed up country and said, hey, I'm gonna go over there and try to yeah, cut them out. They try. They, and they, they kid, your ass is they kidnapping them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it's For some laughing. money from I'm the government, but we have no money. But see, yeah. the United States would have to have a reason to go in, and it's not going to be to help people. What do they have that resources. we want? And they don't have any resources. And that's that what we I was need. asking you about the resources. Yeah. Like, what yeah, would yeah, I mean, be the reasons just, for them to go They don't have like, oil. We only help when we can get better, when we can benefit. Let's be honest with you. Haiti's a black nation. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, the same thing. That's it. So it's not about a humanitarian effort from the uh, American side. Not from the United side. States. It's, yeah. it's, it's the UN. It has to come from the UN. Haiti is a black nation, so they're not going to risk lives over there and say, they wouldn't do that for New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. They ain't going to go over to Haiti and do that. You know, Like I said, you know, uh, it's immigrants coming into this world, this country every day. You know what I'm saying? But the only ones they try to chase down on horses is Haiti, Haitians. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> they don't want talk. them in the country, right? Real talk. The only one they send them back is Haitians. 
horses and whips. And stuff. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> let's be real. This is 2021, <laughs> y'all. Right. And my chair is right, so, uh, You want to, uh, I mean, and once again, all these topics, man, we love you to chime in, man, and keep talking about it and give us some feedback on it. But I didn't want to. I want you to uh, touch on Vanessa Bryant before we run out of time here. Yes. So we have we have ten minutes left on the show, and just for one moment, I just want to talk about Vanessa Bryant and her uh, legal her case. legal issues where with the the state of Cali, uh, where they want her to take an, a psychiatric evaluation for the death of Kobe Bryant. Yeah, and who is Vanessa Bryant? Vanessa Bryant is Kobe Bryant's wife who is fighting the state right now because of the uh, first responders who uh, sent out pictures or video of the crash site when it first came out. Now, you may not be able to find them now because they've probably been all deleted off of the line, but however, these first responders took pictures and videos and posted them before she even knew about what was going on. And this is the helicopter side of where Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and several other people had passed died. away. Yeah, last year in January. Yes, and so now that she's suing the city for this, they are now asking her to take a psychiatric evaluation, saying that she actually endured. Um, yeah, it's it's her and the families related to the other victims. So. L.A. County is trying to force the judge, who's looking over the case, to force the plaintiffs, Vanessa Bryan and the other families, to take a psyche eval because the reason for uh, the plaintiffs, Vanessa Bryan and the families, are suing the L.A. County is, yes, due to the pictures, but they're saying that it caused emotional distress. And trauma. So mm -hmm. the reason why the L.A. County lawyers want them to take this eval is to say, okay, if they are feeling this emotional distress, this eval will prove it. Mm -hmm. But if they take it and it shows that they're, I don't wanna say fine, but they don't, they're not feeling, or they're not, they don't have that emotional distress that we can detect, then they're only doing it for the money. Mind you, it's been eight months, nine months? To a year and a year and eight something. months. A year and eight now. months. It's been a year and eight months. Obviously these people have grown accustomed to their new environment without their loved ones. They've moved on with life. You know, however, it is still a traumatic event that happens. Very traumatic. Very traumatic yeah, event that happens in their yeah. life. They've lost somebody that, that a father, brothers, mm -hmm. sisters, mothers, fathers in this um, tragic event. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that till this day, they are still having nightmares about it. Yeah. I mean, visually, I mean, they're seeing this. To I'm a Spurs fan, but to Kobe Bryant, I'm a nobody, and I cried about his death, and about the kid's death, mm -hmm. and I'm a nobody, and to know that a family, like Vanessa Bryant, just because she, she's the one that everyone knows, just because it's, it was Kobe Bryant, who lost a daughter, yeah. lost a husband, lost friends, and she still has to raise three other daughters who On look own, by just herself. like Kobe, who look just like Kobe. And one of them, when Kobe died, wasn't even a year old yet. And Gianna, not Gianna. It was uh, Gianna that died. No, no, not Gianna, but her sister, the older one. The oldest one, I forgot her name. She's like doing big things right yeah. now. Like, she's doing big things. And through all of that, like, I was telling my earlier today, like, even if I lost you in a traumatic accident, Matt's not a... NBA star, NFL player. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not Kobe. But Natalia. Yeah, Natalia is actually doing big things. Yeah. But my husband is somebody who's very, very important to me. And if he was lost tragically in any kind of event, uh, car shooting, whatever, I would be very dramatic. Especially if the the first responders came and was yeah. taking pictures and making it a big deal, like a funny event about it. I'm not saying that's what they did, but taking pictures of a professional site, your professionalism is what's in question here. Um, You're taking pictures of my husband's yeah. gunshot wound to his head or to yeah, his chest or whatever, yeah, 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 and you're like, this is what he gets, or hey, look, I get the first dip. It's this famous person. You know, yeah. like, no, wow, that is not out. okay yeah, with me. That is yeah. that is very traumatic for me. Even a year and a half later, like, I still know that you did this. I and, still know that you did this to my husband. Yeah, and the LA County 
although they admitted to this situation of where for they were out of line. Mm-hmm. Yes, they destroyed all of it. Yeah, and they covered which it is up. Which another thing. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say they covered it up because they admitted to it. But they did everything they could to, to take it out of the light. Yeah, and and they didn't fire the people who did it, and they're not even releasing the names of the people who were doing and it. And now, if you read the story, yeah. they're saying there's no evidence yeah. of any of this ever happening. No, we know there was evidence because we've been following this for a year, oh for God. over a year, Conspiracy. and we yeah. know that there is evidence of this. Now, do you want to take her back into the ringer and put her through something that she's a already trying to get over on to make it a a, a a legal stance to make a legal stance on you're not gonna get our money Vanessa Bryant you know that's bullshit that's bullshit I would I would continue if I even like I'm saying Matt's not even told if me, it was me. I, would, I would fight for that for him yeah. It's not funny. You know what no. I'm saying? <laughs> He's making it funny. He's making it irrelevant. Oh, fighting who is this nigga? <laughs> he got fifteen dollars in the bank. Y'all know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't listen to them fools. They're being <laughs> assholes. Yeah, and hey, what it is too is that the sheriff, <laughs> uh, the sheriff of LA, oh, this, 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 nigga, this nigga over here. Hey, he ain't got no matches socks on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Matt does. I buy him all matching socks. I'm really broke. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're Whatever. Y'all are talking shit. They're talking shit. Yeah, Am I wrong? I'll... Am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, man. Nah, yeah, so now, nah, yeah, you know, the business of thing, that's crazy, man, and nuts. But, you know, uh, you know, I mean, people ain't got no compassion, man. You know what I'm saying? They sit up there and snapping pictures of Kobe Bryant's body and all this and that. And, I mean, that that's the that's the, the, the price we pay these days. People just, you know, running around and anything to be famous. You know, me snapping because I want to put it out and blah, blah, blah. I was the first on the scene. Yeah, and, and there's no compassion of what mm-hmm. just happened. And this man's a father and a husband and just lost his life. And there's other people that are dead. So it's, it's crazy, man, and I hope that works out for him. Yeah, and the sheriff, Alex Villanueva, uh, he's, he's always been shady. Obviously, when you're the sheriff of you know the second biggest city in the world where all the stars live, you're going to have an opportunity to be around situations where crimes are committed by celebrities. Mm-hmm. So this Kobe Bryant situation isn't the first one. The other one was uh, Tiger Woods when he got into the car crash, mm-hmm. and he was... Uh, Villanueva was on the case. Well, he has to be. He's a sheriff. He's a top guy. So... Um, he was refusing to put out any information. And this isn't like personal information. This is just the basic, hey, what happened? He was in a car crash. Okay, well, like, did you see anything? What, if he, uh, we're not going to let go at this time. Mm-hmm. And it's because he was tr- trying to protect Tiger Woods. And when you're not supposed to do that, we need a sheriff. Everyone is supposed to be treated fairly. Mm-hmm. supposed to be treated the same. That's why justice is blind. You know, it doesn't see the skin color. It doesn't do any of that. And then he <coughs> reverses it for the COVID yeah, situation. Why <clears throat> and then also he uh, won't install, re- reinstate, I guess you could say, the COVID mandates. So anything he can do wrong, he's been doing wrong. He's just, I mean, it's he's just a Jesus. horrible person, really. Uh, <coughs> you know, and he's the one that's going to get hard, hit hard by this because he didn't fire people that took these pictures and shared them and put them online. You mean that people who did things wrong and didn't get fired for surprise, it? Surprise, surprise, I know. No way. But, yeah, so... Uh, that's the situation. I don't know. I, I can't see the judge enforcing it. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they'll lose out on that part of the situation. Um, but this legal case is going to go on for a very, very long time. Even if they lose, they'll retry and retry as much as they can. They'll go to the L.A. Supreme Court, then the California Supreme Court, and if they need to, the Supreme Court of the United States, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. You can leave a freezer open at McDonald's and get fired for that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can get fired for way less yeah, yeah. Real talk. So we have um, oh, we'll get it close. comments in the section and the comment section about yeah. the Kobe Bryant and or the Vanessa Bryant um, psychiatric evaluation list and what you think. Um, upcoming events. Um, we do have Adrian okay. letting us know what's coming up. All right. Yeah. Uh, we got we got uh, events coming up. This week, actually, uh, the start off holiday, uh, Halloween, uh, which is going to be not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, but 
on the 26th of October, we're going to have Daniel Hamilton at the Style House. Gucci. Amali Looking forward to that Style House. Okay. Friday, the 12th of November, we're going to be at A's Up Sports Bar also yes, with Daniel. And we've got a lot of other things working and coming, so it's a lot of, we're going to be real busy this holiday season when it comes up to that. And uh, tell them we're going to be next week with the show. Um, on October 25th, we are doing our po- first pop-up show since starting the new show this season. Yep, yep. Um, we will be at Teacap Daiquiri's, which is on Calabra. You have the address? Uh, no? no. Okay. No. We <laughs> West Over Hills. <laughs> we are West off Over Hills of West Over Hills and Calabra. By Shaper. Yeah, it's right across the right street from the 7-Eleven. Um, we're doing a... We're um. doing the pop up shows. Yeah. Y'all want us to come out and represent your company? Let us know. Hit me up in an email. Amala Entertainment at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. And we will come do a pop up at your place. Yes. However, the first event will be on the 25th at Teacup Daiquiri's off the Calabria and Westover Hills. Um, come in costume. Take a picture, buy a daiquiri, and enter yourself in a free gallon of daiquiri of your choice. So, like I said, it's a Halloween event. Mm -hmm. Come in costume. Mm -hmm. Buy a daiquiri and enter your name. So, if you buy three daiquiris, they have a special. Three daiquiris, $20 $20. plus um, gummy, what is it called? Some some drunken gummies. Mm -hmm. $20. Enter your name into the pot three times because you bought three daiquiris. Now, you buy one daiquiri, you get one entry. Three daiquiris, you get three entries. So, come into your name, take a picture, and win a free oh, gallery. We ain't daiquiri. accepting face paint and masks. No, 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 no. You come costume. You ain't gonna wear no, with no mask, bro. Come costume. Street up. clothes and a mask. Also, um,. <laughs> My girl Tiffany has an event going on right now as well as body sculpting event um, or a promotion. Go to her shop. Um, she is off of. Let me pull it up real quick. Hold on, just one second. <laughs> Make that left off of. Uh, you know that, uh, <laughs> oh, I think Tiffany's that's a church. Is- one, two, three, one, <laughs> Safari Street. She's near Jones Mossberger Road. She's doing, um, it's called the Body Bar San Antonio. Follow her page. Let her know that I sent you Hurricane Rocks Mm -hmm. and you'll get a free gift. Body sculpting, if you don't know, is where you're, where you go in and get this like fat moved around in your body and and deplenished. I will be in there. She's also doing, um, henna tattoos for eyebrows. Which I will be in there next week. I'll let you guys know how that comes out. I don't know if you can see me from this far, but I will get some henna tattoo going on. Guys. And man weaves. And man weaves? Yeah, <laughs> I'm you know, Tim. Yes or no man. on the poll. Y'all check out my my uh, my story. Yes. Yes or no on that poll. Yes uh, or no. To on weave the or not to weave. Nigga. <laughs> that is the question. That's a good one. That's a good question. To weave or not that. to weave. I came up with that three hours ago. <laughs> so, you see how she do? Um. Either way, uh, that's all the events I have. Twenty fifth of September, and right now. The Body Bar San Antonio. Go on Instagram, look her up. She's got you. Eating Hannah fitness. Eating Shout fitness. out to Flow Time and Lisa Fit. Eating fitness. Get a shake. Get that herbal life on the you work out. The shake best deal. to get over there is yeah. the chocolate cover bananas. That so, is my shit. That is the on. best shit ever in life. Mm-hmm. Go and get you one of them. They located drinks. Southeast Side, Goliad Road, 22... 81, something like that. 2011, something like that. Next to the bowling. Next to the bowling. Next to the bowling. Next to the bowling. Right across the street from Big A's. Shout out to Big A. All right, y'all. So, uh, I mean, I think that's our show, man. I mean, that is uh, our show. So definitely yeah. chime in throughout the week, man. Give us some topics, man. Feed in and let us know, most definitely. You got anything else, Peas? Nope, we're good. All right. Good night, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Peace. We love you. Mm-hmm. Bye. Mm-hmm.